Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our software testing bootcamp. We are in chapter two talking about the software development life cycles, trying to understand the fundamentals of software testing and moving into the same topic, which is 2.4. And we're talking about the types of testing here. And uh, as a part of today's tutorial, we'll be looking forward to understand more about retesting and regression testing and what exactly it is all about and how exactly it differs from each other in more detail. So when you talk about the concepts of retesting and regression testing, it is called as a change related testing. A lot of people have a misunderstanding, in fact, not clarity that where these two techniques fall under that sometimes people think is retesting and regression testing quite limited to only the dynamic levels, which simply means that when we talk about doing the exercises of executing a test and performing those necessary executions, that's where we have failures and we need to do retesting on once uh, one on those tests, which once closes the defect, right? The point is, of course, that's true, but it is not limited to that. It's not a classification. It's not a part of uh, certain execution specifically. Retesting and regression testing are the two things which happens globally, which means that wherever any changes happen, these two people will be a part of it. And that's where we say these are independent and do not fall under any particular classification. It can be pretty much performed throughout the testing life cycle and throughout the entire development life cycle as well. For an instance, if we talk about requirement, we talk about code, we talk about design, all of these can have defects and all of these can be modified. Thus, a cross check has to happen. And that's where the need of retesting and regression testing is very well seen. Now, the important point here to understand is, shall we know the definition first before you start talking about the examples? Of course, yes. So let's take it as a story. For example, one fine morning, you get up to find that that you were trying to play some audio on your phone. The audio is getting played, maybe a music file, a song is getting played, but you are not able to hear anything out. Now, first, of course, you will not check your ears that that went wrong. But the point here is you will crash checking the uh, the soft settings of your phone, that whether your phone was on mute, whether the volume is low, or is there any other sound setting which could have changed last time when you tried exercising some of the settings. When you tried doing that, you went to understand that no, there is nothing wrong. So you went to the online sources, Google, YouTube, and you realized that most of these troubleshooting videos are fake. <laughs> That's another dark secret of the YouTube, right? You certainly, you know, find a lot of fake videos that do not have actual solution. So the important point here is that your problem is not your result. So you call the genuine guys, the customer care of your company and told them that, hey, this, I'm just trying to play a song, maybe a video, I tried with several things, but it's getting played. It's just that there's no audio output. And I tried all the soft settings of the phone and I find it pretty, pretty good that they're all okay. So he, of course, the customer care told you to visit them and you know, show the phone to them. So they also tried first, you know, fixing the phone by the soft settings. And then they said, okay, seems like it's a hardware issue. You, can you just drop your phone and come back? Maybe tomorrow we'll be able to, you know, give you that with the resolved issue. Now the point is you went back home next day, the service agent calls you and says, hey, you know what, your phone is just now fixed. It was a hardware issue. We just kind of, you know, went to your motherboard of the phone, replaced the speaker and added a new one, which is working fine. So you can come and collect your phone. Now this invitation, which the service agent gave you, when you go to the showroom, right? When you go to the service center, once again, this time, and he says, hey, this is your phone, you can take it. The very first activity, which is self-understandable, what you will do is here, that is you're going to play a song. And you want to confirm that can you hear the music right now? Is there an audio output? And you surprisingly see that it is working fine, right? But the point here is, this is what you call it as retesting. 
In our instance, in our example, technically, when you have a test case which you executed and it failed, it resulted into identification of a defect, right? And the defect was reported to the developer. Developer said, hey, I've done some modification in the code to fix this issue, and I think it's working fine now. When it comes back to you for testing, you rerun the same test case once again to confirm whether the issue is fixed. And that's what you call it as retesting, the same test case which failed. So in our scenario, in our example, we played a song when we found this issue, found this defect, and when the customer service person says that your issue is resolved, you have to read on the same test case that is play an audio file and see if you're able to hear the music right now, right? And if it works fine, retesting passed. Now to a certain extent, international standards also says retesting is also called as confirmation testing because it is to confirm whether the issue is fixed or not. So we call it as confirmation testing also, or retesting because you are reiterating the same test once again, but with an objective of fixing the issue, right? Now the point is, will you keep your phone in the pocket just because your audio files are working fine? I must be confident that you are nodding your head in no, that no, this guy has opened my phone, he hit some of the hardware components, there might be a possibility that he might have hampered anything else right? And that's pretty much best example to understand that there is a need of regression testing, though your retesting passes. If your retesting passed, that means the defect is resolved. But as developer would have modified something, it may have a side effect on the unchanged part. For example, he could have associated this component in a way that my microphone stopped working now or due to some electronic connect connectivity or wrong connections or short circuit, maybe your camera got burned and it is no longer working. You cannot make a phone call, right? You cannot use your soft keys like increase the volume, decrease the volume. All these have connectivity to your internal PCBs. And if that thing goes wrong, how would you confirm it? So it's always necessary that whenever a change happens, be it about closure of defect, be it about modification and updating an application, regression testing is all about making sure that there is no side effect of this change. And a very general definition to regression is that when a change is performed, the change should only be limited to the change and should not have any side effect on the unchanged part. And that's what testing all other part of the application than the one which is changed is called as regression testing. And a lot of people again think here that regression testing should only be performed when a defect is fixed. No, change can happen when you talk about update, when you talk about upgrade, when you talk about migration. In migration, the platform is changed. An application moves from one platform to another platform. It could be your system configuration change. It could be your operating system change, right? So you perform regression in all those cases. So in a simple definition, we say that regression testing is not limited to defects. It's about a change. And the defect also invites a change, thus we perform regression. So it's not limited to defect. It's all about that whenever a change takes place in the code, it should be having the regression executed, right? And I hope that gives you a clear understanding of differentiation between the retesting and the regression testing. And it certainly means that we're talking about confirming a fix and at the same time making sure this fix does not have a side effect on the unchanged part of the application. And running all of the test cases also wants to make sure that everything is intact and still working fine, right? So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to make you understand what you really need. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.